Yo, 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 man. So, hey, man. I, HHF. HHF. Yeah, hey, man. Y'all, if the chat didn't come, I don't, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> one more time. HHF. 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 Man. Hey, man, guys, man. So, hey, what's going on, James? Good, I'm good, man. Man, so so give me give me a spill on, on HHF, man, from, from your perspective, man. What do you do with HHF? I'm the, I'm the president and national spokesperson for the Hip Hop Fraternity, uh, James C.B. Gray. And I'm honored to have this opportunity by Brother Pim, uh, Ken Ivy, aka Ken Pimpin Ken. <laughs> um, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm just, it's a pleasure, it's an honor, and I'm just happy to be here and do, to do the work. You know? Wow. Wow. So how long, how long have you been with HHF? Uh, I've, been with, I've been with HHF from the beginning. Okay. In this capacity as president, president and national spokesperson for the last uh, two and a half months. Wow. That's heavy, man. Yeah. So, so um, when you first got into it, what was the main thing that drew you to it? Oh, first of all, brother Pimpin Ken. Uh, you know, I've been, I had been doing business with him. You know, before this, Prior. working with the books um, and and working with other deals and things like that. So we had already had a business relationship, and he told me about the blueprint and everything. And I said, listen, whenever you're ready for me, let me know, and I'll be there. So when he came and said, okay, it's time. I said, I was already locked in. I was already following and monitoring everything, so I knew how to get right in. I'd been in the music industry for years, you know, as an A&R a a executive, ran labels as a consultant. And then on the political side of things, you know, as a sit sitting politician right now, and a political consultant. So it's like the best of both worlds for me, and also being on the business side of things for a long time as well. So it was right up my alley, you know. Wow. So how many, you're on the East Coast, so yeah. how many How many members are up here on the East Coast? Uh, about 120 right now. Okay. Yeah. That's big, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, and you international. <laughs> I heard the accent. Well, give me your name again, because I mess it up. I don't want to mess your name yeah, up. my name is Vado. Vado, yeah. man. V-A-D-O, so, yeah. It, you, is this an African dialect? No, you know, actually, Vado means the DJ is here. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm a DJ, I'm a former DJ, you know okay. what I'm saying? So, when you say DJ Varo, meaning like the DJ's in the house, you wow. know what I'm saying? It's an African thing, you know, it's from actually from um, Togo, you know, that, that means the DJ's in the house. That means I'm here. Wow. Yeah. So, so, how, so, how did you end up with HHF? I mean, you know, um, we started like, you know, from the early, early, I think we were like four, you know what I'm saying, when we first, uh, when we first link up Pepe Kane. And then, like that was like two and a half years ago, and um, and I, I I actually met Ken through a friend of mine. He told me that Ken needed some assistant. Become a videographer, I'm a director, so and I'm a graphic designer. Wow! So he needed some assistance on the graphic part of the media part. So that's why I came in. You wow! So you you when you think of HHF, I mean, is it that is things going on in Africa and other countries with HHF? Yeah, you know, we actually have a. Um, a chapter in, in Nigeria. Wow. We have big. a chapter in, uh, in Cameroon. And then we have a chapter in Haiti. You know what I'm saying? Um, and you know, that's a, you know, that's just the beginning. That's you know, just the beginning. That's just, you know, Africa is very, very big. And, um, you know, I'm a CEO of uh, HHL Africa too, so. Man, stop it. <laughs> you see how he smiled when he said that? Yeah. <laughs> man, that's big, man. Like, like I, I really, when I first, uh, talked to Ken about the whole HHF movement, man. It was just seeing people connect, brothers connecting like that. Mm -hmm. I had to respect it, man. So I, I'm so proud to even be affiliated with you guys, man. And, and that's why it's big, man, when you can come into something and see brothers connecting. And you know how I am about that. I was like, man, brothers connecting, I'm all in, man, because we just, you don't see it a lot. You know what I mean? But to even the word, the, the HHF, the hip hop fraternity, th that shows the unity, man, is just powerful to me. So man, big ups, man. Thank you. For Not sure. only just connecting, but showing everybody that you can be a boss and how to educate each other because some people are so stuck in their regular routines of how, what they do and they're comfortable in their life not knowing there's elevation in everything and being able to reach back and help somebody else to come up. And that's what I like about it as well. And you talk about having it in Africa, but um, how many more chapters are you trying to even branch out from that chapter? We're trying to get a whole Africa, you know, you know, the whole, every country in Africa, you know, we might have a couple of chapters in a couple of countries, you know, just like we do here, you know, mm -hmm. in the U.S., we got like 30 chapters already. So, you know, Africa is really big. So we, we can have as many as, you know, as we can, as people can tap in and, you know, get to know the HHF, you know, follow the vision and just spread the word out. 
And do you keep the vision exact, or should I say not the vision, but do you keep um, the program exactly the same in each country? Because you know how sometimes when people franchise things out or have different chapters, it's a little bit different because of the culture, Mm -hmm. because of who you're dealing with. So is it going to change a little bit because of that? You know, uh, our core value is uh, love, peace, and respect. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That means that, you know, that can go anywhere international. You can be in Mexico, talk about love, peace, and respect. You can be in Africa, talk about. So the message, that core message is always going to be the same. But now there's going to be some culture, flavor in there that you add to it. For example, Nigeria, that different culture, different flavor. Uh, Other countries got different. But the the main core is uh, peace, love, and respect, you know. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna get to it now. Um, so, Ice, man, what's going on, man? You when they, when you hear about the the hip hop fraternity, well, the, I know. So, Ken, uh, he done broke it down to me. You know, mm-hmm. he, your advice was was valuable, like in in in, in building HHF. Right. Um, what 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 did you say to Ken that was so influential? Well, the first actual hip hop fraternity would be Zulu Nation out of New York City. Uh, Bambada and Africa Islam, the guy that put me on, they created a, a union of rappers out of New York that called themselves the Zulu Nation, which was a spinoff from the Black Spades, which was a gang. And they said, you know, we have to create a unit because if we, if we have all this violence going on, ain't no girls going to come to the parties. So they kind of turn into an anti-gang when they say you come in peace or leave in pieces, we gonna be serious. And then you hear groups like Tri Call Quest, uh, a lot of groups, you know, uh, were a part of the Zulu Nation, the Jungle Brothers, uh, of course, Soul Sonic Force, but a, but a lot of the Bronx rappers were part of the Zulus. And it's really just a shout out. It's not like they're exchanging money, they're just saying we're all on the same team. So I was really intrigued with that, where it was like a union of rappers that all say, we under the same umbrella. We cool. And I, I saw that as power. So I went to L.A., but like um, you were saying as far as cultural, mm-hmm. L.A. is a little bit too street for the term Zulu. That's, that, that is culturally not going to work in L.A. L.A. got a gang culture. So I studied Lucky Luciano, who created a thing called the Commission, which was a group of the five families, the mob families. And they made a decision to say, hey, look, we we all gangsters, but before we fight, we are willing to sit down. The bosses of each family agree to a sit down. And that way we can stop a lot of these gang wars. And there were certain rules, like you can't take off a boss. You have to have permission and all these different rules. I was like, if they were able to do this, and these are all gangsters and killers, I can do this with rap. So I took part Zulu Nation, part Commission, and I created this thing called the Rhyme Syndicate in Los Angeles, which had everybody from Cypress Hill to Dub C and all these different people. Anybody that wasn't in NWA or part of the NWA family, meaning Cube and all snooping on them, were syndicate members. There were groups on top of groups. So... The rule is, I'm not in charge of nothing. Like, Kenny's not in charge of anything in the hip-hop fraternity. All the groups or subdivisions are all have their own bosses. But there's only one agreement. Before we fight, we talk. Right? And we talk to the bosses. That's it. Now, Kenny said, well, I want to do something hip-hop fraternity. I said, well, this is basically the, the way you set it up. You, you don't try to be the boss. You don't try to control. You're the founder, but you, my brother from Nigeria, Kenny doesn't have any pull over him. He just says, this is what we wish. And he, it's up to him to bring it to his team. Mm-hmm. Also, Hip Hop Fraternity doesn't make any money at this moment. I said, you got, that's the best time to build a unit of people when there's no money. Because when the money comes in, that's when the division comes in. That's real. That's when everybody. So right now, this thing really just operates in a way to help each other. That's all it is. It's like a bunch of rap groups that are trying to share producers till somebody breaks. In the actual hip hop fraternity, I told them just a minute ago, what they need is a hit. That's real. They need a star. But here's the question. When that group hits, 
Will they rep the hip hop fraternity, exactly. or will they branch off and say "fuck y'all"? You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Yeah. That, that's that's the question. Will they be loyal? When I broke from Syndicate, I was loyal, and I got Everlast a record deal. I got Donald D a record deal. I got Divine Styler. Whether those groups were big or hit, or Lord Finesse, I signed Lord Finesse. So all those groups, I was able to help. So the question is, as the hip hop fraternity starts to morph and gain power how that power is shared amongst the units. Because any one of the units of the hip hop fraternity can hit. Something can happen. The Texas chapter can say, hey, we have this opportunity to build this or that. Or, that doesn't affect everybody, but it still reps the name and the name moves up. Mm -hmm. yeah. You see? Yeah. So it's, it's a question of, it's still an experiment. Is will loyalty remain once the money does come mm -hmm. that's that's the big question because i've interviewed a lot of people and that's the thing that most of these guys with the record labels the, the new the new john the new people the new guys are saying you don't know nobody until they get until money they get money once they get the money as you was just talking about that's where the, the that's where hey what's what, what's going to happen at this point but here's something the hip-hop fraternity is not a record label it's not even a management organization it's just a group of friends yeah. that have all trying to and my my whole thing was why compete we all going in the same direction bam and and and, and competitiveness in music is stupid it's stupid because you can go out and buy anybody's record and buy the other person's record at the same time you don't not buy another record because another record is out ain't nobody running out of money mm -hmm. you just don't like these other motherfuckers that's why you didn't buy it so the theory of my record dropping on the same day as 50 cent it doesn't mean I won't sell. If my record is just as good, it's gonna sell. So the competitiveness is something that's really petty. It's yeah. stupid. It's not even necessary because everybody can eat in this business, but you gotta have a hit record. So I think as the hip hop fraternity merges into other levels, I think the, the, I think the real next move is hip hop fraternity DJs. Wow. But Vado says to where now you start to control what people hear. You got a lot of artists, but now how many DJs can you place in the clubs to where you guys now have a little bit of power to where you actually can control what's being heard? Wow. Radio is harder, but the clubs, you can pretty much get a hip hop controller or infect him with some of the people from your clique. Man. Yeah. The man himself, man. Mr. Ken and I, I got it. What you got? What you got? I had a question. Fire Steve. Yeah. Fire Steve. Yeah. Okay. No, because you said it's a brotherhood of friends who are helping each other. So but there's with a no, common goal. With a common goal. But so that means there's no contracts. No. That anybody signed to say that you have to do this or anything at all. No, no because each unit is self-contained. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like there might be a chapter where you sign contracts, but we're not in control of anybody's unit. Oh, okay. We we. You know, like, like like Vado said, peace, love, and, 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 and respect. respect. That's what it's based on. It's a very, it's, it's, it's organized, but it's organized in a way that it's like cells. Different cells run different things different ways. Mm -hmm. Now, somebody could report back and say, hey, the Virginia chapter is out of pocket. They charging right. this, they doing this, they doing that. And who knows? Kenny might say, wait a minute, they not really representing how we want to move, so... They might be excommunicated, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Terminated. Right. But the object really is for all these cats that want to make it in business, in show business, to have an outlet. The thing is, there's, there's management, there's production, there's video, there's TV. There's a lot, of, a lot of chances you can get if you have a team. If you have people that you can access and they'll come and help you. The same way we were able to get you guys to come here, that's part of the power of hip hop fraternity. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a great thing. And I've always thought that rappers should have a union and have something where they connected better than just everybody being by themselves. That's it awesome. blew my mind when I heard about it because I was like, man, so you telling me nobody has, you've patented it down so I can say this. Remember, we talked about that. I'm like, nobody has done nothing with that word hip hop fraternity. He's like, no, nah, that's, I own it. I'm like, man, that's big because you would have thought somebody, let me bring you in right. Mm -hmm. My guy, man, Ken Ivy, man, listen, hey, well, man. Well, you know, uh, everything, you know, has its uh, embryo stages. Yeah, you know yeah. What I'm saying? So 
you know, n not too many people can say that they're personal friends with Ice T. You know, I know his wife, I know his kids. You know, I mean, he's just a good person, man, and the wisdom that he have. And you, you interview him today. You see how sharp he is. How yeah, man. He got a photographic memory. How he can <laughs> rap about stuff he rapped about thirty years ago. So you, can you imagine being a fly on the wall with Ice T? So you know, to <laughs> me, he's not just my brother. He's a mentor. You know, and I'm his mentee. So a lot of times, you know, a lot of people don't know the reason why I quit Pippen. Honestly, is because I saw Ice T at the players' ball, and I seen that he. Gave somebody, told somebody they go, they can either take the grenade or the record deal, and that just changed my life. That's wow. my favorite story. That, that changed the whole trajectory of my life. So you know, calling Ice T and you know him advising me, and he talking about the rap syndicate and telling me all these other rap stories and stuff that I've been hearing for the last twenty five years. I just thought it would be fitting, you know, for us to bring brothers together. You know, I know Ice T can't be an active participant. You know, he has law and order. You know, he, like he said, he got to take care of his family. But I, you know, have several businesses. Everyone know, you know, I, I, I make money in my sleep. So, you know, I can, I can spend a little time with the children, you know. And basically, the whole objective of the hip hop fraternity is to bring everyone together, create what I call a think tank in hip hop. So with a think tank, what happens is we all be able to compare each other notes. You know, I know you heard the infamous story about uh, P. Diddy and uh, Master P being on the plane and Master P said, how much it costs? He said 30000 He asked uh, P. Diddy how much? He said 30000 Both of us paying $30,000 for the same flight. Well, that's the record business, you know what I'm saying? 15% of royalties while the record labels get 85% of the royalty. Mm -hmm. So what that means if say if it's if, if you made a million dollars for the record company, you would get hundred and fifty thousand and the record company get eight hundred and fifty thousand. But if you got somebody like me or Ice T or like James or like Vado can say, Hey man, listen, like Ice T said, you know, in one of the uh, in one of our documentary, he said, I'm here to let brothers know, don't go down there. <laughs> There's trouble down there. So, you know, that's what the hip hop fraternity is. We like, uh, we throw alarm clock in the graveyard. You know, we teach you how to, you know, uh, we don't tiptoe past the medicine cabinet because we want to wake up to sleeping pills. Yeah. You know, so, you know, so <laughs> that's, that's the IT quotable. Right? <laughs> Look, hold on, let me say something. <laughs> let me say something. Just being able, you know, like I meet people, I say, I'm not, a, I'm not an agent manager or record label, I'm a consultant. <laughs> and just being able to consult with certain people or having that phone number that you can call to ask a question. If I want to know something about going on in Africa, being able to call Vado and say, I know these people. That is so fucking valuable. You don't even understand how just having that connection. I'll give you a really quick example. I did the, uh, the color soundtrack. And that's called a... That's called a uh, a uh, favorite nations deal. On a favorite nations deal, everybody on that album gets the same exact check. Mm. Everybody. So I got my royalty for one of my payments was twenty five thousand. But I'm friends with Big Daddy Kane. He's mm. on that album. Me being able to tell Kane, I got twenty five G's. His label was telling him something different. Wow. See what I'm saying? So having this connection to where you can cross reference information through other people, what a promoter is offering, who they are. Don't fuck with this person. This person's shady. It's valuable as fuck. And you don't know how many times I'll just call people I know, whether it's like one of my, my friends like Damon John, Shark Tank. I'll be like, yo, what, what's really good with this? Or oh, don't fuck with them. This is what life is about, having those connections and that mm -hmm. communication. And when you have a web like this, man, you can fact check anybody so quick, find out where they coming from, what it is, and cut the bullshit out mm -hmm. so quick. I've had situations where people have run off on promoters, you know, run off on promoters. I won't say no rapper's name, but then I get a call from somebody else. And they say, hey, man, you know, they, they, they canceled the show. They, they took our 20000 and 30000 Do you know how to reach them? And I was able to go through somebody who was in their camp and got the money back. Wow. The, the promoter was never going to get it back because they didn't have that connection. So these connections is valuable as fuck. If, if Kenny calls me up today and says, Ice, man, I need a favor, such and such and such and such. If I can't handle the favor, I got somebody that owes me a favor that can handle that favor. Mm -hmm. So having the con there's nothing better than the network. And when you got people that fuck with you and it's not always money, the favors are way more valuable than the money. 
Way more value. I, I learned that. <laughs> Building relationships, way more and bigger. that's the hip-hop fraternity, ladies and gentlemen. Man. But one more, one more nugget what? to the hip-hop fraternity. Nah, I love so, it. No, but say, say, for, all... say, for example, like we have our own social media, right? TheHipHopFraternity.com. If, if Ice-T give me a project, I can put that project on, the, on, on our social media, and we can send out a mass text. We have the ability to sell, because we, 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 we collect digital real estate, and I can send that message, and that within itself, is a benefit because now Ice T can sell a hundred thousand records if we have a million fans or a million members, and then that hundred thousand will put them instantly on the Billboard charts, and that would instantly bring the program directors in, and now we got a record that's trendy. So you know that's what a lot of companies do. Like give you the best example of that. Look at Live Nation. Live Nation. When you do a, a Live Nation concert, they email all those people in their database, and guess what? Those concerts sell out in thirty seconds. Well, we're going to have that same ability because we're going to keep building this net. It's going to get wider. Right now, we have 4,000 going on 5,000 members. You know, uh, we have thousands of members that's active right now on the website, on the social media. And we also have our own clothing line. You see the jacket. Bottle Bottle. Right? So that, he becomes a billboard. You know, we got thousands of people. We sold 1,000 jackets that's walking around with Hip Hop Fraternity. You know, we have our own award show, Hip Hop Fraternity Awards, you know, where we don't, like IC said, we independent. We ain't got to call... I mean, we love the Grammys. <laughs> Give them another. Give them another. But uh, we don't have to worry about the Grammys. We don't have to worry about the BET TV or MTV because guess what? We got our own award show. And guess what? You know, we got a lot of celebrities just like BET that comes to our award show. We had like 10 celebrities come last year. And that comes back from what Ice-T taught me many, many years ago, those relationships and be able to connect with people. Ice-T can't do the favor. He might not be able to make it at a certain uh, date, but he might be able to call somebody in Atlanta. I remember one time uh, I did something at KOD. It was my birthday party. Ice-T couldn't make it, but he called his daughter. He said, make sure you go to the uh, uh, Kenny Ivey's birthday party and support him. You know what wow, I'm saying? So, you know, I mean, yeah, that's, that, no, that's the hip-hop fraternity. And then guess what? We also going to create a pension fund for people like Ice T when they get a little, you know, a little older, or people like myself when we get a little older, it's gonna be money there. We're gonna hire a venture wow. capital. I ain't planning on going broke. Hey, because hey, 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 I got my own pension. Hey, hey, Ice T, Ice T probably throw a donate set to the pension. Yeah, <laughs> so, 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 but anyway, you know, I mean, it's a lot of rappers, man. You know, that not gonna make it. Everybody yeah. ain't gonna be Ice T. Right. So we want to have a cushion there for those brothers and sisters. You know what I'm saying? And then, like, with the record labels, you know, Universal, Def Jam, uh, uh, Sony Music, Columbia Records, you know, we want to be able to have leverage to the point where we got enough members that's in the hip-hop community can say, hey, look here, Universal, chill. You know what I'm saying? Quit giving these bad deals out. You know, otherwise, we're going to boycott you. You know, just how the Italians did. Same, same scenario. The key, the key to this game, though, really, I figured it out, is that, you know, social media is an illusion. You know, I got two million followers, but how many of those people are totally active that are really mm -hmm. moving with me? And I always tell new artists, I say, all you need is a thousand fans. If you have a thousand diehard fans, and when I say diehard, I mean, if you say, hey, man, I'm, I'm putting out a shirt for $30 and they all buy it. You basically have an income now. You do that three times a year. You, 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 you know, you, you clocking a few dollars, but... The trick is solidifying the hip hop fraternity where the people actually are active and what, 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 what the fraternity chooses to do, they move with them, you know, and that's not happening on social media. Social media is a bunch of looky loos. It's a bunch of bots. And, you know, if I if I put up something on my social media, you know, maybe 100 people, maybe 200 people, 300 people are active on there. But the rest of just numbers. And people have confused social media with actual followers. I heard somebody had 10 million followers and they put out a record and they couldn't sell 2,000 records. Mm. You know, so don't get confused with social media. But this is realer than social media. This is people actively connecting, actually in a database, actually moving together. On one accord. On one accord. So... It's way more powerful and stuff. And I always tell people, I'm like, yeah, they say, oh, well, you got all these millions of people. I'm like, you gotta, you understand Twitter. If you understand Twitter, Twitter is a chat room. It's a chat room. They talking right now. But if I tweet something right now and you're not on Twitter, you'll never see it because it shoots by on your timeline and it's gone. So the theory that two million people are seeing it, no, only the people that are active.
actively looking at the phone at that moment and happen to see it on the timeline, unless you have people that check your page daily. You know, that's why I did daily game. But it's an illusion. It's not really, it's not, it's not real. Like even if I, I, I follow Kenny Ivey on Instagram, I cannot tell you when I've actually went to his page. See what I'm saying? You don't go to their page. If, if something he posts comes by, but it's in a timeline, it's moving. Mm -hmm. And now if you're, if you're a normal person, these people are following 2000 motherfuckers. That timeline is moving like fast. So how, how effective is it? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's also a thing where they're not opening it up. They, they control the algorithm, all right? So, so whoever they open it up to at a given moment or time is who can see it. You know, you buy advertisements so that you can push a narrative too. And, but that opens it up to other people that may not even be following you. So these are people who don't really care, but they view it and you see views if on this. If this is done correctly. It's crazy. If this is in an infant stage. If, if this is done correctly, it'll be more powerful for what we're doing than social media. Because what you'll do is you'll have a group of people that are into a certain thing in conversation together, not haters, all pushing the same thing. That's powerful. Man, um, I, I just want to say one thing. <laughs> okay. No, 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 seriously. Uh, you know, we are all, don't get it twisted, we are all hip hop fraternity, even you. For sure. You know, you're a hip hop fraternity. So I just want to make sure that, you know, people, you know, Ice-T don't let you in his house unless you hear Pop Let me tell you something. I'm at Ice-T house, man. I don't even know how to act. Hey, I come hey, out hey, here. Jeff, Listen, you I done done seen hey, calls I ain't never hear. seen before. That, don't get you know, twisted. If I had to preach, I'd preach up in here. You <laughs> hey, he wants to make a closer remark and then we got to let go. Okay. Okay, James. Let's, 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 James, what's, what's going on, man? All right, so uh, I'm about to launch the uh, Political Action Committee. Uh, segment of the uh, hip hop fraternity under that umbrella, and the reason I'm, I'm, I want to do this is because um, collectively hip hop is not just black, it's not just white. Mm -hmm. It collectively hip hop is all demographics of people, all different genres. So if we, if everybody was to raise their hand and say, "Oh, you know, who's who's a hip hop fan?" You'd have white, black, Jew, Asian. A you see what I'm saying? So in that database. We have way more numbers mm -hmm. collectively of hip hop, you know, participants and people who, who love hip hop music. So under that banner, the Hip Hop uh, Political Action Committee, we would have a, a strong number of voting demographic. We could take that number and go to Congress and fight for anything that we need in hip hop. Mm -hmm. You know, any, any, you know, and like pimping, like Ken said, when it comes to the pension, health care. All these things are essential, but guess what? We don't have the number base right now to fight for and to actively be accounted for on that level. So launching the political action committee is going to be able to identify with that demographic who stands with us as hip hop, as hip hop community and hip hop uh, fraternity affiliates. Oh. So that's a power base that we will be able to have tangible, physical, and that can actively you know work for us because guess what every other every other situation lgbt jews asians they all collectively get their numbers together come to the congress come to, to the white house and those numbers speak for itself and they leverage that that voting demographic you know to themselves and for their resources so i think we have the potential to do the same thing and when i brought it to the Emancipation, Canada, new emancipation oh yeah that's that's another thing you know that uh, new the new emancipation proclamation is literally the uh power of unlocking the mind in order to access resources a lot of us are still stuck in the in the slave mentality got the chains on the brain and not able to really function we're not getting the right information too so that's another thing that leaves us stagnated. Now we fall into the whole crabs in the bowel syndrome as well. Mm -hmm. That's a very stagnated, low level vibration that you know, has possessed a lot of our people. So we have to break out of that. I'm always encouraging people to surround yourself with, with people who are doing mm -hmm. things actively. This is why Hip Hop Fraternity is another relief source as well. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm a, I have two mentor programs. You know, I teach about leadership and how important it is to align yourself properly. So people who are stagnated you know, and that and that low level of operation, we're not with that. Hip hop fraternity is very progressive. We got we're making numbers and we're networking and we're expanding on a daily basis. You want to be down with the winning team? Get down with us, man. Okay? There it is, Vado, man. Hey, man, <laughs> Vado, James, man, Ken, and, and Ice, man, Ice T, man. Thank you for inviting us, Boss Talk One Hundred and One over at Ice T House. 
Ken, man, stop playing, man. We winning, man. H H L. Man, it's been another great segment. Get the book. Get the book. Get the book. Get the book. You know what we say? It's always a treat when players Man, hey, man, it's been another great segment. Boss Talk One Hundred and One, where the bosses talk. And we out. Yes, sir.